director here at W2, Community Media Arts Society, and we're a social enterprise here. And we are the, uh, the, uh, the, the host today. We're also the, uh, the lead community amenity in the Woodward's project. And uh, this is our 10th year. It's the 10th anniversary of the Wood Squad. And uh, Yay. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not sure what to say about that. It's been, it's been a long journey. And uh, there's an exhibit uh, up in the atrium and we're, we're building an exhibit uh, that'll run until October the 16th, and there'll be a couple of public events that talk about the history of Wood Squat, how it started, the aspirations for urban Aboriginal population in particular, the aspirations for uh, housing for Indigenous people, for employment, a lot of things that were hoped for uh, that created the squat and then created the, uh, the, the community program that, that the city of Vancouver then integrated into the program. So here we are 10 years later and uh, Woodward's, I think it's a, a symbolic kind of entry point for this conversation today. Woodward's in many ways is seen as the su success or the failure of that inclusive economic development strategy. So uh, it's important that we as a community talk about these issues openly and we, uh, we deal with the successes and the failures and we learn from them and we hold each other accountable. Um, I think the exciting thing for us as a community enterprise, uh, we, we receive no operating funding. Uh, we Last year we earned about 93% of our $600,000 operating budget. Uh, it was all self-funded, self-generated revenues. This year we're probably about 80 to 85% self-generated. So in terms of social enterprise and community nonprofits, we're on the very extreme side of, uh, of self-dependence and, uh, and independence, economic independence. Um, in one way, we're very proud of that, but, other, but the, other, the other reality of that is though it's, it's also a reality of the situation right now in uh, eroding public funding for, for social services and, and, and civil society. So these are all, within this context of the changing environment, political environment, uh, we're here gathered today to talk about our own community, we're talking about our own economic development. Uh, you'll hear some things, I really I hope people will uh, put their hands up and um, ask for clarification if, if people are talking about particular words or terminology uh, if you just need to stretch or you have a question I have a question uh, did, did, uh, did anybody move into those uh, social housing that's supposed to be developed in this? Uh, yeah there's a hundred yeah. units right above the Simon Fraser University this is Simon Fraser University right there above London Drugs and there's a hundred units just above it and I think there's a few residents here today that live upstairs in Woodward's housing there's also 65 family units is it, uh, Housing? No, there's no students there. There's no students there. Are they people from, from the downtown east side? Yeah, as I mentioned, some people here in the room are from, that live there and they're long time downtown east side residents. Um, yeah. I never heard it in the media. Yeah. And, and it's, a good, it's a good question. Because um, there's some people, that, there are students that are in the condominiums that are the, the towers, but it's, uh, it's low income residents in the Portland Hotel Society units, the 100 units they have. Um, and that's a bigger conversation about what were the what are the outcomes of the Woodward's project. Um, but we're in the Woodward's community meeting room right here. Uh, we're here to gather to talk about our own community, to talk about job creation, to talk about supporting each other. Um, and I hope we do this with an open open mind and open heart. Uh, sometimes this is tricky and very political and entrenched, and there's a lot of uh, you know I've been at this. I've been working in the neighborhood for 25 years. And there's, uh, you know, a lot of things we've lost, and there's a lot of pain, and there's a lot of hurt, and uh, and that sometimes can make the conversations around support for our ideas, uh, especially our good ideas. Uh, when we don't have those ideas supported, we can get angry and uh, resentful, and uh, there's a lot of territorialism. There's a lot of uh, silos and fiefdoms and power brokers, and uh, and I think today. Certainly W2's practice, my own personal practice, but also W2's practice, is, is about resident-driven processes, uh, but also dealing with the pragmatic situation of the community. You know, I've done research around the world, particularly Western Europe and North America. There's not a single neighborhood that has withstood the market gentrification of their neighborhoods. When gentrification comes in, and I'm not, I'm not saying that as a blessing of it, I'm just saying reality is, in the research I've done, there's been successful protection of spaces or inclusive employment strategies or restaurants or factories or warehouses or there's been projects that are being quite successful around the world. 
but there's never been, in my research, a, uh, an entire neighborhood that's protected itself and builds revitalization that the way the city of Vancouver alleges revitalization is happening without displacement. So, you know, like I said, we can be angry about that. The thing is, for us as residents, we also should be organizing around that and, and thinking pragmatically, who are our allies? How can we create jobs? Uh, how can we work with business owners? How can we work with the city? How can we work with the BIAs? And how can we create a strategy that works for as many residents as possible? And so that's the spirit I'm here for. I'm here today. Uh, yeah, if you have your cell phones, you can turn them off. <laughs> Usually it's mine when, I, when that one happens. Um, so uh, yeah, I just hope everyone comes here with good energy, and, uh, but don't be afraid to ask questions, uh, especially around the terminology stuff. So when we're talking about low-hanging fruit or community-based economic development, it's important that everybody understands <coughs> what those words are. What does the close term Low-hanging Low -hanging fruit? So it's like that's an expression we use when we say, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of challenges, a lot of big sky ideas. Like, like, hey, we should do this, and then we should do this. And it's like, okay, well, how are we going to get a thousand downtown side residents trained? Well, okay, so if we break it down into smaller pieces and realize that just working with the neighbor right here, or working with this project right here, or the DNC Sunday Market is sitting there, or we're running a cafe that hires local women, or Potluck does, you know, these are all things that are are actually happening or need a little bit of help. That's what we describe as low-hanging fruit. Like, these are things that are actually low, you know, it's like you're, you're, on, a fruit, you're on a fruit tree and... Uh, the ones you pick first. The ones you pick first. Not because you're lazy, but because they're right there. And uh, let's start there, and then let's, let's figure out how we're gonna build a ladder together, and who's gonna stand on whose shoulders, and... Um, so, we got to get the scratches. If you don't know what you're doing here today, you're only here for the door prizes. Uh, those will be dra those will be drawn at the end. And uh, what, I got a question. Who doesn't have a ticket? Me. I don't. I don't Who didn't sign? I don't. How come I don't have a door prize? So our, our, our ticket master Clyde is going to uh, hand everyone a ticket, and I, I believe uh, we're going to hand out after lunch. We're going to hand out another round of tickets. And uh, there's five rounds of $50 cash uh, at the end of the day, uh, at 3 o'clock. Uh, there's lunch. You look on your agenda. There's lunch at uh, 1.15 from the, from the crew downstairs. The crew downstairs is giving us lunch at 1.15. So that's all happening. There'll be coffee and water out there all day. Uh, any questions before I hand over the floor to Hendrik? Any housekeeping? Bathrooms are right here. And by the way, tell your friends, those bathrooms are always open. One of the few public amenities of the Woodward's project. Did I just yeah. say that? Um, so the, the public bathrooms are the most uh, popular aspect of W2, uh, but for good reason, right? Because public bathrooms were never designed into the Woodward's project, so uh, so we did that ourselves. Um, public bathrooms are there. Cafe downstairs. Just hit me up or hit Leanne. Leanne is uh, the admin director at W2. Ask her a question if you need help today. And without any further ado, I want to introduce Hendrik Hukamo, who's going to be hosting. Keeping us on track with the agenda and uh, and letting you know who our special guests are today. Okay. Thank